Welcome again. This week's experiment is going to be about the draining flow from a side leak in a water bottle. So if you consider the example we done in class, um, when we were studying chapter three and Bernoulli, we had uh, this tank and it had a hole on the side and um, flow issued out of it under the effect of gravity. Um, under the assumptions of frictionless flow, um, we and under the assumption that the size of the tank, the tank was infinitely large, uh, such that the size of the hole on the side was much, much smaller than um, the tank size. Uh, we were able to uh, deduce from mass conservation that the level in the tank dropped very slowly, uh, that it contained very little kinetic energy. Um, and when we had a, if we had a frictionless flow and we drew a streamline uh, that follows the path of the flow from um, between two points, and here we pick the point on the surface and a point at the outlet where both of them are open to atmosphere, then we can apply Bernoulli's um, equation. And between point one and between point two, we have the pressure to be atmospheric for both of them. And under this assumption, the velocity at level one, uh, because the tank is infinitely large, is zero. So we end up with a relationship between the velocity that issues out of the um, puncture hole and the height difference. So the kinetic energy that came out through here was due to the gravitational energy stored in the fluid particles at the top of the tank. So this is, with H being the delta Z, um, we, we were able to um, clean up this Navier-Stokes equation and write this. So the velocity coming out of the jet or the jet velocity was just the 2G delta H or the 2G delta Z. Um, so this was the example we've done and we want this to be the basis for um, our experiment, take home experiment this week. So what do we want to do here? Um, why are we assigning this uh, problem? One is because we want to play a little bit. We want to explore um, how can we measure velocities, flow rates, um, things like that, heights, uh, distances, and so on in, in a fluid context. And two is to get some um, solid um, experience with applying Bernoulli in a real life example. And um, then we want to check, are our assumptions correct uh, by trying to compare um, the Bernoulli analysis with what real life tells us through the experiment? So this is what we want to do today. Um, one, of the, one of the variations to that problem that we want to introduce in, the, this, um, in this lecture and in this take-home experiment is the assumption of uh, the diameter ratio. In the previous example, we had an infinitely large diameter ratio between one and two. But what if that was still large, but not very large, what, what, not infinitely large? Um, how would our analysis, um, how would our prediction of the velocity change? We have made the assumption that we were quasi-steady, the level dropped very slowly. But now what if it drops a little bit faster? How would that affect um, my problem parameters? How would it affect... Because one thing I would like to know is how long does it take to empty this this tank? This would be one bulk quantity we want to look at. But also, how does the velocity profile, the velocity temporal profile look like? What does the velocity with time curve look like um, at the outlet of the tank? So this is what 
um, what we want to do. You can look through this analysis, the quasi steady analysis, uh, where if I had um, made the assumption that I, I was quasi steady, we can analyze, we, um, and if I, now my level drops and I can notice that drop, uh, I can still do the Bernoulli analysis. At least we want to try and still do the Bernoulli al analysis, but we want to stop every minute and do the do it for uh, every level and try and predict what the velocity is going to be. Um, so that's what this quasi steady analysis is. We haven't done it in class, but it's very straightforward. VDH DT, and you do use mass conservation, and then. Uh, you relate dH dt to the h in the tank, and then you separate variables and integrate. So you get a relationship between time and between the height in the tank. So how long does it take for the tank to empty from a certain initial level to um, whatever level two? How much time will that take? So this is one of the things we want to uh, be uh, doing. So this is still in the introduction. So here's our experiment. It's already on YouTube, so you can um, go look at it. You get a tank, uh, you get a bottle, you drill a hole on the side, and as you can see, you will um, let it um, you will let it empty out. Um, so that's your experiment. But I'd like you to do it twice: one for a small hole and one for a large hole diameter uh, in that experiment. Uh, because uh, the thing we want to look at, the, the question we started asking is, how do our assumptions um, hold uh, when we get, when our d1 over d2 becomes um, less and less? It is large, but it gets less and less. How far do we deviate from um, how, how does that affect our results? Uh, and do we see any deviations when we get that? So this is our particular experiment. So here is a snapshot of the, of the video. I had a container and I put a water bottle. It's a plastic bottle in it. I put some water in there and I added some food coloring. Um, so uh, so as to be able to look at the level of the water, um, the surface velocity, the surface um, level drops at a certain uh, rate, dH dt, that's the velocity of the surface, with height being as the elevation of uh, the water level from a certain reference. So here I picked the reference to be the puncture in the side of my container and here uh, we would like to talk a little bit about the experiment and how to do it and how to analyze our data um, so it involves drilling um, a hole filling your system with liquid let it eject out um, at a certain velocity that we want to determine um, and then getting your video camera to record this height h and once we have this height h we will do our analysis plus you really want to record uh, the other problem pa parameters like the diameter d2 and somehow if you can you would like to zoom in with your camera and get the diameter of this ejection hole and if you use a pin or a needle or um, or a nail to puncture a hole in there, um, that would give you at least a starting idea. The jet diameter would not exactly be the same as the nail uh, that you used to puncture the hole, but it would uh, give you an indication of it. So uh, measure that too. Uh, measure the diameter of your nail as well as the, uh, get an estimate of the diameter of the jet as soon as it gets out of the hole. Um, so, the velocity um, of the surface of the water is just the rate of change of the height in, the, in this tank or in this container or water bottle. Um, 
And then we can use mass conservation to relate velocity at the surface to the issuing velocity v2. But for that, we really need to have a good uh, feel of the diameter d2. d1 is easy to get because it's on the same scale, on the scale of the rules that we we use. You can um, a measuring tape would be fine to do that. But because the punctured hole is small. You really need to get a little bit uh, more technical by getting your phone camera close by, um, zoom in on the issuing jet, and get a ruler right behind it, and somehow, and then uh, by comparing the image later, you compare the scale uh, on the ruler that you set behind. So you get your phone camera here, uh, you look at it, and then you set your ruler right behind it. You want to set the camera perpendicular to the jet and here's your ruler it has markings and some you would like to look at this region with part of the ruler so you'll have let's say two markings here uh, and you can get, then get a ratio between this marking which would be one millimeter and the and the jet uh, so if it was one and a half this dimension that would be the size of your jet um, so I would like you to document how you do this, uh, show pictures of that. Um, okay, I need an eraser here. So then the next thing that we can um, measure um, in um, for our experiment is actually the, uh, as the jet comes out, uh, it would, so here's your jet, so let me just go back for a sec. So here's your jet, as it comes out, so I've drawn it as a, um, as a dashed line, it would eject onto the plate or at any level, um, it would shoot a certain distance delta x or x. Uh, and at that particular, you can pick which x you would like, uh, so you can decide any point on this curve which x you like, but with that x also comes uh, a y and elevation from that point. So the easiest point is to pick the uh, the surface of the bottom of the container because the y is fixed. So you make your life easier and you only then measure the x. Um, so try and make your puncture slightly above uh, the surface. You can do it on on a table, but then you have to clean it afterwards, or you can just get a big um, container to contain the leaking liquid. Right, so X and Y, so how fast the jet comes out, uh, the faster it comes out, it's going to shoot a longer distance, uh, X. Um, and we want to use this to actually try and estimate the velocity. So this is another way to estimate the velocity V2. The first way was to use mass conservation, do the video analysis, get V1, and from mass conservation we get V2. But here we're not, we can only look at the jet itself and do some um relate v uh, of the jet to x and y so here is the schematic of what's going on here here is your water bottle here is the hole and here is the uh, the jet that comes out and you can pick so we'll pick this point which is the bottom the bottom pan right um so you can pick any x you like you can pick this x you can pick um this location but we'll what we'll do is pick um, something physically reasonable, which is the bottom of, as we said, the bottom of this pan right there, uh, which is this level right here. And uh, that pan level has a constant Y from the opening. Uh, so it makes our life easier. And then we just measure uh, the X with time. So when the water bottle is fully filled, the water will shoot out all the way here. When the bottle has less water, uh, the kinetic energy of the shooting jet will be much less, so it'll just um, project onto a shorter distance x. So you want to record, so what you want to have is you want to have um, your camera to have both um, so you'll do one experiment and, and have your camera do a side view so that you will get uh, a measure exactly this view that you would like to get. 
So from that view, you can get the water height in the tank, as well as you get a side view of the issuing distance of the jet. And then with a the ruler, you can measure the distance from the water table to um, the puncture hole. Right. Um, so that's about doing the experiment and how then once you measure X and Y, uh, let's just make an assumption that we that we can use a projectile um, analysis. Uh, it's not 100% accurate, but let's assume that we can use a projectile analysis for, for this jet with uh, the distance X being time versus, it's a different time T than this time. Um, so that's why I have a capital T times the horizontal velocity. You can see the jet comes out here with a vertical velocity and horizontal velocity. The vertical velocity is negligible uh, right there. Um, and we only take the horizontal component. So V2 is mostly V2 horizontal. And um, you'll use um, the gravitational acceleration uh, where you, if you start with a projectile with zero vertical velocity, then the distance is going that it's going to move vertically will be under uh, under the assumption of no friction, no air drag, will be just uh, with t squared, and it's got uh, g over half g half g t squared, uh, the equation that you have derived in high school. Then you get rid of this t, and you get rid of this t, and you get a relationship between the the x and the velocity v. So we said that the y is constant, and the only thing that varies is the uh, is the x. The y is constant just because of the way we've done the experiment and the way we picked uh, where um, the um, where our water table is going to be or where our reference is going to be. So here is another way to find the velocity uh, v two. So you want to do that, and then what do you do next? Uh, so maybe, in fact, I would like you to be uh, also innovative. Um, and this will work better when the water level is dropping slower, slowly. Is Let's say between this level and this level, you get a water cup and stick it right here. Uh, so that would, for this average level, uh, you'll get a timer and until you see how much you're filling, filled your cup in milliliters and you get a volumetric flow rate and by getting the diameter d you can get the velocity v2. So you see we have come up with a number of ways to, to experiment with this simple setup and um, so and then we want to analyze that. Um, one we have the quasi steady assumption in the first slide that we looked at but then and we use that to find the velocity v2. Excuse me, but then we would like to um, see how good is this. That's the quasi and uh, steady analysis of the Bernoulli equation. Then we can look at v2 again and um, compute it from knowledge of v1 and the diameter ratio. So let's do that too. So that will give you a plot of v2 with time and here you get a curve of v2 with time so we're, we're we're looking at our different ways to compute v2 as a function of time and trying to compare them to uh, each other so now we have two ways here and then let's look at the third way because look uh, if we look at the full Bernoulli um, um, not the quasi study in the quasi study Bernoulli this is the full Bernoulli equation because p1 is p2 uh, so it relates V2 square to the surface level drop and the delta Z. So now this is non-zero, right? Uh, in this analysis, V1 was zero. In this analysis, V1 is non-zero. Let's just get it from the dh dt. And see and compute V2. What do we get um, from this type of analysis? So how does this differ from what we have computed in the previous two uh, examples. And that, so then we'll get a third curve of the velocity v2 as a function of time. 
And now let's use the um, XY jet trajectory to also compute V2 according to the equation in the previous slide. So now we have, um, we have four ways to compute, to analyze V2 from, from our data. So let's plot them on the same plot. So you'll have, um, you'll have time here on one axis and you will have velocity V2 on the other axis. Uh, and it will probably look something like this. Uh, so I would like you this way, if I plot the four curves on the same plot, then I can compare and see what's happening. Uh, if they cross, if they don't cross, which one is higher, which one is lower, or the trends the same, or maybe this one, maybe one will be crazy and go in the opposite direction. So we wouldn't be able to see this if we have four different graphs. Let's just use a single graph to plot all those four. And then do it again for um, the big hole and the large hole. So this is big hole, and then you'll do one for the large hole. Um, and then we can uh, we can compare. And if you want to be uh, very critical, what happens to the big hole and a large hole? I would take a third plot, put all those curves. Um, let's say I I draw them in black, and these ones I draw them in red, and put them all here. So if I had four and four, I will have eight curves here, uh, four in black and four in red, and then I can have a good feel and good understanding of what's going on. So let's please do that. Um, so that's part A of the analysis that I'd like you to do. And part, so, and part B is um, we want to now get some, let's say, some grades, some uh, performance measure of these four. Right, we could look at the graphs and see one is higher and one is lower. But what if I want to put a grade, 80%, this one is 80% good, this one is 70% good. So we need to find some integral quantity. And for that, we want to find the time for the tank to empty. And here is um, using the quasi-steady analysis and then um, using mass conservation relating uh, H to uh, the time. So I get a relationship between, uh, for the time, it takes the tank to empty from an initial level H0 to a new level um, H. So that you can get, um, so you have your video, and you start with H0 and you let your video run. This is time t equals zero. You find the time until it gets to, um, to a certain level H. Um, so that's from the experiment. But using this analysis, all you need to know is the diameter ratio and you need to um, find, to start with a certain H0. And from that H0, you can find the time to empty the tank. And you'll compare this time uh, to empty the tank from H0 to H with the timestamp on the uh, video. So there is the analysis, which is this equation, and then there is the experiment. So uh, you would like to see how they uh, compare. And for us to be, um, um, for us, to have confidence in our data, don't only do it once uh, for us for uh, one H zero or one H. So you can so either vary this by five times or vary this by five times. Actually, um, yeah, vary either of those numbers by five times. So you're, you're going to get T one, T two, T three. So you're going to get a table of H um, and H zero. So let's say you you always start with a certain um, with a certain h uh, zero. So let's say t twenty centimeters or uh, twenty five centimeter. Uh, so you'll repeat this experiment, let's say f uh, five times, twenty five, twenty five. But then each time you'll get you'll drop to a different h. So in this experiment, I'm going to drop to an h of twenty. That's going to give me a time of, let's say, five seconds. Um, I, that time, I want to get it from the experiment, from the video, but also 
I want to get it from this equation uh, by plugging this H0 and H right here. So that's five seconds, that's the, let's say, analysis. And then we compare it to the experiment. Maybe the experiment is going to give me a slightly different number. Maybe the experiment will give me 4.8 seconds. And then um, you do that, so then 20, then uh, 15, and maybe 10, all the way until you get, so you get the point. And you want, so I would like to see this type of table, uh, and we want to discuss what's going on in there. And then you want to do it both for the big, so I want to see two tables, one as we have seen here, uh, one for uh, the two different size, one for each of the two different sized holes. I would like to see one here for each of uh, the two sized holes. And I would like you to discuss your results in this analysis, just like we have. Why, why are these trends like so? Why is one higher than the other? What is the problem? Is, it, is my problem the diameter, measuring the diameter D2? Can I uh, use this analysis to find um, a better estimate of D2? What if I, so you found your analysis and you find that they're completely different and then the, your conclusion is, well, I think my D2 is incorrect. Um, keep that, show it to me and then say, well, I'm gonna redo this. I, feel, I think that the initially measured D2 was incorrect uh, and I now I measured it to be um, 1.8 millimeters. But now if I use a D2 of, instead of 1.8 millimeter, I use a D2 of 1.8 for three millimeters, all my numbers are gonna collapse better. So you wanna show me this table maybe twice or three times, um, maybe twice, once. Uh, if, you, if you think that D2 is the, is the source of the, of the discrepancy between your experiment and between, between your analysis. So um, that's what, that's, we would like to do some iterative thinking in there and try and go back, not just go sequentially in one shot, no, we'd like to do it sequentially, but then go back to our initial assumptions, our initial measurements, and try and and see if I tweak them a little bit, uh, how would that affect my results? So I would like to see this in, in plots, and I would like to see it also in terms of um, discussion text. You, you type, well, I changed D2 from 1.7 to 1.8, and this is what I got. Is tape. What I got at 1.7 is table 1, what I got at 1.8 millimeters is table 2. So you get the, you get the point. Um, so now you, some of you might ask, how do I get DHDT? Um, so here's an example. Um, you only have digital data, right? Because uh, your video can only give you uh, digital timestamps. They aren't continuous, it doesn't give you a function. Uh, so we can um, approximate DHDT um, by using a different, um, the, the differential, we can use differencing um, technique. So the DHDT is the delta H over delta T. And for this to be approximately equal, to be as close as possible, you'd like to, to have uh, the limit of the delta T to be, uh, to be small. So here's an... <clears throat> Excuse me. Here's an example. Uh, let's say we are on our. We took our video and then we played the video again. I looked at the timestamp, one, two, three, four, five seconds, and then the height, and then to get um, to get the DHDT. Um, so I will create another two columns in my Excel table. Uh, so for the first time step, I can't get a gradient in there. Uh, at least with um, with this central differencing, um, what I can get is the at the center point between second one and two, which is second one point five. So it's one plus two is three divided by two is one point five. I can get the difference. Forty five minus fifty is um, forty five minus fifty is. Um, minus 5 divided by 2 minus 1. So that gives me a minus 5 of DHDT. That's approximately equal to, according to this 
differencing um, differentiation or differencing technique and so on so 43 minus 45 is minus 2 divided by 1 so you get minus 2 and we put it at the timestamp of 2 plus 3 which is 5 over 2 is 2 and a half so that's how we differentiate and then I get time t versus dh dt and then this I can plot on the same graph as um, so I can plot t versus h and uh, so I can plot t uh, versus h so this t and h and then I can plot this t uh, versus this dh dt um, so we're probably going to get something like uh, this h and dh dt both of them as a function of time All right, so, um, and you can use the same time base because it's the same time base. Um, so that's a note on the analysis and discuss how you decided to go in one second or half a second. Did you use, so if this was your curve, did you use one second between this point and this point and one second between those two points or did you vary your time step between the beginning of the curve and the end of the curve and discuss why and how you how did you decide that um so um what do what do i want you to do for this uh jet experiment for the leaking gravity driven leak so you'd like to to um document your uh experiment using a video um so we just put the important stuff in there less than two minutes i'm only going to more so don't have your video more than two minutes two minutes is plenty of time uh, then i'd like you to write a report and that would include uh, an introduction section tell me about the bernoulli equation the bernoulli equation is is used so and so and it's under these assumptions and it comes from um um from integrating the momentum balance and but it has to be in your own words so don't copy th uh, something from the book and then uh, you'd like to state the objective of this study which were the four or five objectives at the beginning if you have one more objective added in there that's that's a plus um and um then you have the section on your experimental method so here's my experiment, here's the bottle, it's 5 centimeter in diameter, it's 20 meter, uh, centimeter tall and so on. And this is how I punctured my, um, the side hole and um, this is the diameter of the nail that I used for the puncture. Um, and the first time it didn't work okay and the second time we had to change it. So be descriptive, tell me what, what you faced during your, your experiment, um, it would go under the experimental methods, like uh, the first time it didn't work, the second time it, it worked, it would go under here, under experimental methods. Um, and then uh, your analytical methods, which are the Bernoulli equations, quasi-steady, the, um, the full Bernoulli, and then state your results, write your results. You have the figures, you have uh, the tables, and um, you would like to label your axes, put captions on them. And when you have multiple curves, I would like to know which curve is which. So um, use um, good labels uh, that they are clear. So dashed lines, uh, solid lines, squares, and so on. Square symbols, triangles. And then the figure has to have a caption. So Figure one uh, shows the height of the water as a function of time for five different um, measurement methods of the height. So it has to have a caption. And put one graph on, um, on each on one page. So don't cramp. So make the graph comfortable in, in its own place. Um, what you have to do is once you put your figure, you'd like to, I would like to see what you describe so you'll say well as we can see the jet issues so if i want to describe this figure i will say what i have in this figure is plotted is the x-axis the distance from the hole versus the y-axis 
the elevation of the jet so this is the elevation of the jet as a function of height the jet issues due to its kinetic energy <clears throat> and it behaves like a projectile so um, depending on the velocity <clears throat> excuse me on the velocity v2 the projection distance will be um, will depend on v2 according to a particular equation so i would like to see this in your uh, how what you describe it and we see that it goes in a parabolic fashion because the equation with time or with x is parabolic so i would like to see a, a deep understanding remember we objective of this study was to solidify our understanding of fluid mechanics in particular the Bernoulli equation so that's where I would see um, that you have acquired that knowledge that you know about it and you can uh, communicate it in a written report and then uh, for each one of those objectives you had four or five objectives you would put conclusion one for conclusion for part a was to understand the effect of the assumption of infinitely large um infinitely large diameter ratio well when uh, when we had infinite large diameter ratio the velocity was higher and when we had it smaller and smaller with the larger and larger um, puncture hole we had the curves to be deviate more and more because of so and so and then the last section of your report will be uh, the appendix just put in your raw data uh, x comma y and and so on uh, so these are in the plots. These are the actual table tabulated data. So if I want to copy and paste them in Excel, I can do that and uh, be able to get the same graphs that you have gotten. But the graphs have to be clean and clear. And so you see the uh, you see the difference between just you giving me data and between putting graphs and the results. Uh, they tell you about they tell you the same thing, but here the the they fit in a story, while here the appendix is more of, of a data repository. Uh, very good. So this is our um, experiment for this week. I've got many emails about um, uh, the teamwork. And I will put, so please work in teams of two. Um, if you can, if you don't have a team mate, I can assign you um, to a, a team member. But please let's stick with uh, teams of two for this type of experiment. Um, each one of you will do one of the bottles and then you will do the analysis uh, together. So that way um, we'd have um, a fair evaluation uh, and a just evaluation from my point of view. Very good. Thank you guys and I will talk to you again on Thursday. Goodbye.